Good morning, Central Kentucky. This is Sandra Leslie White coming to you live from WJMM Studios here just outside of Lexington, Kentucky. Shouting out to all of you around the country, WJMM.com and Facebook this morning. Good morning. Well, um, how are you doing out there? I mean, I know we're we're living through the coronavirus. I'm um, continuing on with my series in Fear Knots, but wondering how you're spending your time. I don't know about you, but I mean, revisiting all kinds of things, especially, you know, sort of the Disney movies. Okay, come on, girls. I had my little princess with me all weekend, Susanna. Um, we used to love those Disney princess movies. She was Cinderella in her first musical at Lexington Christian Academy. That was really a special moment for me. And also, I uh, just went on through all of them, and she portrays these little princesses <laughs> now as an actress and singer at birthday parties. It's really cute. But I want to shout out particularly, actually, this morning to my son, Daniel. Daniel, uh, you were raised with two ladies in your household, two princesses in your household, and from a very early age, you were quite the protector. I don't know, apart from just the Spirit of God, you know, what entered into you at, at, as such a tiny little boy, as far back as three years of age, being so protective of me and being so protective of your sister and also even of our housekeeper, Moselle. And there are stories upon stories of how you defended us. And I'm thinking of you this morning, Daniel, as I go into the next very interesting story in the scriptures in my Fear Not series. We've Finish Judges, and we're now in the book of Ruth. And what's interesting about this one is this fear not does not come from who you think it would. So let's jump in this morning and look at Ruth 3. We're going to read the story 1 to 18. Title of the message today is Fear Not, Protect the Princess. So here we go, Ruth 3, 1, 2, oh, I think, let's see, are we going to go all the way to 18? We'll try. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? And now is not Boaz our kinsman with whose maids you were? Behold, he winnows barley at the threshing floor tonight. Wash yourself, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your best clothes, and go down to the threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies, and you shall go and uncover his feet and lie down. Then he will tell you what you should do. And she said to her, All that you say I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law had commanded her, when Boaz had eaten and drunk his heart, was merry, he went down to lie at the end of the heap of grain. And she came secretly and uncovered his feet and lay down. And it happened in the middle of the night that the man was startled and bent forward, and behold, a woman was lying at his feet. And he said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your maid. So spread your covering over your maid, for you are a close relative." Then he said, May you be blessed of the Lord, my daughter. You have shown your last kindness to be better than the first by not going after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you whatever you ask. For all my people in the city know that you are a woman of excellence. And now it is true, I am a close relative. However, there are closer relatives even than I. Remain this night, and when morning comes, if he will redeem you, good, let him redeem you. But if he does not wish to redeem you, then I will redeem you, 
as the Lord lives, lie down until morning. So she laid his feet until morning and rose before one could recognize another. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. Again, he said, give me the cloak that is on you and hold it. So she held it and he measured six measures of barley and laid it on her. Then she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, How did it go, my daughter? And she told her all the man had done for her. And she said, These six measures of barley he gave to me. For he said, Do not go to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then she said, Wait, my daughter, until you know how the matter turns out. For the man will not rest until he has settled it today. All right, if you're just tuning in, this is Sandra Leslie White. We're in the series, Fear Not, and we're talking about Ruth today. And you see now, or hear now, that that fear not came out of the mouth of Boaz. Most of our fear nots are going to come out of the mouth of Yahweh in the Old Testament, and God, and the Lord, and the angels of the Lord. And, and so today, though is the first time that we hear from a man speaking to a young woman who has made herself very vulnerable on the threshing floor by uncovering the feet of a close relative, her elder, Boaz. So there are so many stories about Ruth and Boaz. And really, deep down inside, and I've heard it so many times, Women really want a Boaz. They they are waiting for their Boaz. There there's some funny things about waiting for your Boaz. Don't don't wait for your broke ass or your don't wait for your for your drunk ass or don't wait for your mean ass or your bad ass. You wait for your Joe Boaz. <laughs> Sorry, I messed that one up. Boaz. I think actually that was something that a pastor preached on from Georgia and uh, was a great sermon. But I really see in this that we're looking at an interesting man and a very brave young woman. And I have a message, fear not, protect the princess. So when... When and if you know or not know this, the backstory of Ruth, you know, this is a, a Moabitess woman who didn't even know God, didn't, didn't come from there. But her mother-in-law, they've lost their, their husbands, uh, and, and they're going back to the, their own promised land, following the book of Judges, interestingly. So Naomi says, I'm going back to my people. I'm going back to my people, Israel. I'm going back. And... This Ruth, her daughter-in-law, says, wherever you'll go, I'll go. Wherever, whatever you do, I'll do, and I'll stay with you. And it's this wonderful, you know, glorious sort of union. Actually, the name Ruth means friendship or association. And and so this great friendship between a mother and, and daughter-in-law is fabulous. But they come out of a place of real desperation and were working in the fields and had gone back to to Naomi's relatives, her descendants, one of which was this man, Boaz, whose name actually means strength. So we have a beautiful story, I think, here that unfolds before us of a mother-in-law who wanted the best for her daughter-in-law. She had gone through enough. She knew that Boaz would give her the security, the protection that she needed. She was a young woman. Perhaps she was a beautiful woman. Having been married before, maybe there were uh, young men that were after her, perhaps for the wrong reasons. So it, it really is an interesting backstory about Naomi going and taking really charge of saying in the first verse of chapter 3, my daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well for you. So within her own family, she sought out security. And she chose, she chose, meaning Naomi chose Boaz, our kinsman, 
with whose maids you were. Behold, he winnows barley at the threshing floor tonight. And she gives her these great instructions of, of, you know, wash yourself, dress well, go. You know, and there are stories that, that talk about this sort of bold move on Ruth's part to go into the threshing hole after eating and drinking and uncover a man's feet, which had some sexual connotations. But at this time, it seems to me that it was a, a place of honor. Okay, I, I have gone back and forth on this, but listen to what Adam Clark says about this. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid. In the Hebrew, it is more, it is transliterated, spread thy wing. The wing is the emblem of protection. It is a metaphor taken from the young of fowls, which run under the wings of their mothers, that they may be saved from birds of prey. The meaning here is, take me to thee for wife. And so the Targum has translated it, let thy name be called on thy handmaid to take me for wife, because thou art the Redeemer. So, we look to even the present day, when a Jew marries a woman, he throws the skirt or end of his talith over her to signify that he has taken her under his protection. And so Boaz, James Nesbitt continues, became a shelter and protection to Ruth. The dignity and force, the gentleness and self-restraint of his character made him as one who became a shelter indeed to the lonely exile from Moab. His name meant strength. And like the pillar, also called Boaz, which stood at the entrance of the temple, he was a tower of strength to the heart of a fair Moabitess woman whom he had made his wife. So, he goes on to say the temple pillar itself must have given voice to some memories which lingered in the Israelites' minds, that of a high-minded, gentle-souled, and courageous Boaz, who had not been merely mighty in his own day, but who was the very... One from whom sprang a race of heroes and kings. The secret of his strength lay in his faith. To him the thought of God was no mere formal thing. God to him was a protector, the shelter, the guardian of human life. Beneath his wings all human beings were safe. He welcomes Ruth to that shelter which he knew and which he had tried. The shelter of God of Israel under whose wings... She had come to trust. So this is a beautiful, I think, explanation. Again, those started out with Adam Clark into James Nesbitt. Speaking of this Boaz, this protector, this man who just did the right thing by protecting the princess. I think that for all of us today, we have an opportunity really to reconsider our roles, don't we? I know that domestic violence is on the rise during this quarantine and all, and that's a terrible thing. So women, under those circumstances, you are a princess. Seek shelter and seek shelter from the God that loves you and is your ultimate Boaz. Also, seek emotional shelter from the body of Christ and also looking toward what we can do to protect the people around us. And I think particularly women today. So, the title of the message again today was, Fear Not, Protect the Princess. And look upon those women that are around you. They, we have to be strong sometimes. Um, and sometimes it's out of fear that we're our strongest, it seems. But we truly need a protector. So reconsider your role and be the one that says to her, fear not. I'm going to protect the princess. So God bless you today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow.